Welcome everybody back to another edition of the More Life Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And I'm Cassie. And today we got a very special guest, Brianna Rose on. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super excited to get us some questions and talk about some stuff. Yes, Yes. most definitely. All right. So before we get started, Brianna, we kind of know a little bit about you already. But for the audience out there, for all the viewers, let us know your name, where you're from, how old are you, fun fact about yourself. Um, So my name is Brianna. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I was injured six years ago from a gunshot wound. A gun went off behind the seat and somebody was in the back of my, um, behind my passenger seat and the gun went off. I did not know him, so I'm sure we'll get into all that fun stuff, you know. But um, from that, the bullet remains in my back at T12. So I'm a T12 through L5, a lower para. Um, I'm 28 years old and I love to act and do auditions and I love to create stuff I love doing creative stuff on my free time and just making stuff for my family and friends and like little fun slogans like this little shirt says will bad bitch coming through okay. like little slogans for our um yes. our community just to empower ourselves yes. and stuff like that so that's it. been my recent hobby <laughs> yes, yes I love it and we could definitely see your personality on your Instagram. So, look, if you guys aren't following her on Instagram, make sure you guys go check her out. Her information will be up on the screen and down there below. But you can kind of see your personality coming out through your Instagram. And that's one thing that, you know, I really love about you and your story because I was able to go on your Instagram and really see everything and find out a lot of information about you. So, I really appreciate you putting the information out there and definitely advocating for our community because we need it. Oh, I appreciate that because honestly, I've been slacking these last two months, so I need to get back into it, you know. Sometimes I feel like it's an overwhelming amount of people that are doing such amazing things that it's, like, easy to get, like, forecasted. But, like, mm-hmm. I also need to remember that I'm my own person and I'm putting out my own content, like, uh, put yes. keep those empowering words to myself, too. So, appreciate it. Yeah, yes. and also, especially as a woman, you know, a, a lot of times... Yeah. You know, there is like for Kevin, I feel like he he related to a lot of guys, but I'm just like, you know what? But there's a lot of women out there, too, you know, and I, I just felt like you you definitely are one of the people that have shined the most so far that I've seen. So it's like I'm, I'm excited to have you here on the podcast. And if for anybody out there, if you're a woman in a, in a chair, just make sure you guys go follow her. She's definitely an inspiration, even for me, too. You know, I love your confidence. It shines through and I can definitely see that. Oh, thank you. And you guys, and of course, can go follow the podcast that I host, too. That's just a women's disability show where we talk about more things that women go through in in a chair and just life in general. Honestly, it just gives you a big perspective of people. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is, like, bring different audience members on. So, like, maybe there's just one girl that relates to one of our guests on there. And you can find, like, you know, know that you're not alone out there and get their perspective and their tools and tips of how they do things, you know. So, yeah, if you're newly injured or even if you're old, you just want some new fresh tips and tricks go and check that out (laughs) what's the name of the podcast live to roll live to roll so make sure you guys go check out the podcast live to roll link will be down there in the description box below Ooh, that's what's up though i like that i like that because i feel like that that's one thing that i'm kind of trying to work towards and that's communicating with other people that are in wheelchairs i feel like that was Mm -hmm. something that i kind of shied away from because i'm normally a reserved person so Doing the whole Instagram reels and stuff like that, it's kind of new for me because my Instagram has really been stagnant for a long time because Mm -hmm. I built up the following doing something else. And then I just I really posted about myself, about my injury, doing any videos with, you know, me in wheelchairs. And that's something that I feel like that once I changed, my audience started growing and people started seeing what I was doing and I was able to, you know, communicate a little bit more. So I've been trying to do my best to really get out of my comfort zone to communicate with people because that's one thing that I admire about the women in our in our community because it seems like y'all are always linking up. Y'all all know each other. And, yes. you know, I feel like that that's something that the guys could do a better job of and also yeah. myself. So thank you. I definitely tell the girls, like, women 
are in general is like very empowering you know we empower each other but the disabled women community is like so fucking amazing can i cuss on this podcast sorry yes. I'm a cusser. Okay. okay i just want to make sure <laughs> um and um and like i just tell them like we just love to just motivate one another and just tell each other how beautiful we are and just how much like we you can do whatever you want. You can be a boss babe. You can live your goal. You can do, you're worthy of being in a relationship, you know, of dating around. Like, just like that empowerment, I think is so important. And that's honestly what got me out of my comfort zone. It's like, for the first two years, I didn't talk to anybody in a wheelchair. I didn't know anything about a wheelchair community. And like, I'm local. So like, that just goes to show you like how uninterested I was. I was in a huge hospital wheelchair for the first two years. Mm. But I just felt, honestly, I was going through such a low point in my life I was so depressed after my injury I felt like why am I alive why in the world would God keep me alive to live this miserable life like I did not understand it and I was so angry about it um I was very independent before my injury and I tried very hard to be the first in my family to go to college and just kind of do a little bit more better in life and so I was like, out of everyone, I'm the one who got shot. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like flabbergasted with life, you know, and it just blew my mind. And um, I was just in a newly relationship. I mean, me and my boyfriend were together for one year. Mm-hmm. He was two years younger than me. So it, mm-hmm. we had no like real dedication to each other. Like, and we were literally just thrown inside of like a hotel room and just miserable for the first two years. So anyways. I finally started getting a little bit out of my comfort zone and I think I found like the push girls and I was like, wait, you can be sexy in a wheelchair, you know, you can be, you can still drive, you know, you can still go out, you can still live life. Like I didn't even, that wasn't even an option in my brain. Yeah. And um, I remember my mom used to tell me like, oh, Brianna, you just have to accept it. And I'd be like, okay, mom, like, here I go, accept button, you know, like, it's not that easy here. Like, how do I accept it? What do I do? Yeah. Um, so I went to the Rolls experience and um, that was life changing for me. And I'm at the Triumph Foundation, uh, which is a local organization in Southern California, which is just super amazing. They helped me get a new wheelchair. I started going to their support groups and I started realizing like, hey, newly injured people are getting injured every day. Yes. They're exactly. coming in these hospitals broken alone, just like I was not knowing what to do next and it made me just it lit a fire in me to just be their friends to just help them through their journey and Mm -hmm. it motivates me beyond measures and i feel like it made my injury worth it for me um if that makes sense no uh, trust me i i could definitely definitely relate um when i first started doing videos on my life in a wheelchair and you know just different struggles that i faced at first i didn't want to do it and then my wife pushed me to do it. And then I was able to see the change that I was making because, you know, different yeah. people would hit me up and be like, hey, man, I seen the video that you did. Uh, can you give me like a little bit more insight on what you do? And then like I tell everybody that write me, like, if you if you get me in the DM, ask whatever you want. Ask like, 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 like literally have no filter. Literally just ask because I was that person that needed help at one time. And I, mm-hmm. ha- and I had to go through it in order to, you know, figure things out. Because social media wasn't like how it was in 2012. Yeah. You know, that's one advantage that n- people that are newly injured have right now. Mm-hmm. You could see the community that's out there. I, I, I didn't see that. So, exactly. So that was how I kind of started, you know, sh- sharing myself. So thanks, babe, for You're welcome. pushing me. Thank, I mean, thank you guys for both of you guys, you know, because I know it does take a lot for you guys in, in a wheelchair to really just be on you know on broadcast online showing all your daily struggles you know but everybody goes through that you know when they do get into an accident so for you guys to really share your struggles and show how you guys get around what you guys do how you go day day to day and really inspire other people it's it's amazing you know we do need to spread this you know this disability awareness so where everybody this is normal you know people Mm -hmm. make it seem like it's not normal but it's it's normal you know accidents do happen and you know life can be still go on after an accident so it's Mm -hmm. amazing to see you guys continue yes yes continue life it's more life more life more life more life (laughs) yes so yes Yes, that's what i i love that i think that's so beautiful because i i remember not feeling like there was a life and i love seeing that spark 
every single time in people's eyes when they realize that there is life after injury and like they have can do things you know and like Mm -hmm. being being able to change that for them you know um it's more than a blessing. It's hard to even describe like how grateful I feel that it's not something that I had to really work hard in school for, you know, like go to engineering school, you know, like do something like to do something in life. Like I'm just able to change lives just by talking to people, just by answering a couple of questions. Like I feel like, yeah, that's beyond a blessing, you know? Mm-hmm. And also just by sharing your story, being you, mm-hmm. being, being you mm-hmm. motivates people. Yeah, I fought against sharing my story for a long time, too. And the hashtag stories were reaching out to me for months to do it. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to, like, look at all the old footages and go through all the old pictures of me walking and doing all this other stuff. And um, I was so against it for a while. And I finally was just like, okay, I'm going to do it. I got, like, a, a sprint of inspiration. And when I went through my old photos, these same old photos of me walking, like I felt sad for that older version of myself, which was such a weird feeling. I felt like I saw all the stuff I was going through mentally too um, before my injury, when before I would just fantasize about those moments, you know? So that was an interesting part about like going back and really revealing everything. And not only that, but I got to reach different girls that were shot, that were not being open with their story, that realized that they saw different aspects of my story of me not wanting to press charges or just how it happened or how I got over it and they just got super inspired and um I just got to talk to one girl yesterday and she couldn't even talk about her story when she first saw my story and now she's just growing she was able to stop therapy she was able to tell our whole group about herself and it's just so beautiful like I was just like it really pushed me like you you know what we just gotta get out there and not judge ourselves. Exactly. Yes. All right. So for the people out there, I know you've probably told this story a million times, but you know, <laughs> you are new to our channel, new to the podcast. So tell us how you, how the accident happened leading up to that day. You know, what, what, what went, you know, what went down? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I had just moved out to Arizona about like three or four months prior to help my grandmother. She asked me for help because she got diagnosed with lung cancer and she was having hip surgery and she didn't have anybody to take care of her. So she was out in Arizona and I was in California. I was going to school. Um, Me and my boyfriend were living together and I decided to give up my apartment, take a break off of school and go and help her. So I moved all our stuff over there and my boyfriend got a job. It was of course so hard because we came from like a city and we're stoners. So it was like, we didn't know anybody out there, you know, they just had kind of like a bunk weed. We didn't know where to get anything. We didn't know where anybody lived, where any cool spots were to hang out. It was just so boring, you know, but we finally started to get our groove a little bit. Um, we met a coworker out there and that was also a stoner. So we would just kind of go, I would go pick them up after work. Mm-hmm. We would wait outside the, the co-worker's house and smoke, and we would wait for his parents to get home. So it would be like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. And we did that every day for about like a month and a half. Um, so it was pretty consistent. We were doing it pretty consistently. Um, and this night, it was getting a little bit more darker, and a guy came walking down the street. My boyfriend was in the driver's seat, I was in the passenger seat, and the co-worker was in the back. It was already, like, towards the end of the night because it was, like, we were already done smoking. Like, he was already going to go inside. Like, we were already getting ready to leave. And um, he knocks on my window. And I turn over to him. And I turn back to my boyfriend because I'm, like, okay, this guy looks a little bit more gangsterish. Like, he had, like, um, a hat on. His head was, like, bald and, like, tatted, you know. So my first instinct wasn't to be, like, hey, you know, what do you need? <laughs> I was, like, a little hesitant at first. Um, and so when I turned to my boyfriend, it was like that split of a second that the coworker rolled down his window and it happened to be that they were previously introduced about like a week or two ago at a acquaintance house. So they just were like, Hey, this is so-and-so like, and they just got to meet. So he just wanted to let him know that he was in the car. Like, Hey, what's up? You know? So he rolled down his window and, um, the guy was frustrated about his sister's boyfriend I don't remember they were kind of talking and he insisted on getting in the car he was like let me get in the car to tell you the story I don't want to disrespect your house the guy's like no you're fine it's my house like I'm telling you it's okay and I was like no I don't feel comfortable I want to get in so the co-worker the guy went to go walk around and the co-worker scoots over so he can get in from my passenger side yeah 
and they're talking. I'm not really paying attention. I'm a little annoyed that he's in my car at this point. Yeah. Forgive me, everybody. I get a lot of slack for this part of my story. They're like, why the hell would you let some gangster guy with tattooed head into your car? You know, like yeah. Yeah. normal people would be like, ha. Right. In my defense, we were in a new area. We were the only ones with a car. So a lot of these people were getting in our car because the guy, the coworker grew up there. So he was introducing us to new people all the time. You know, like it was a very frequent thing. Mm-hmm. Um, your first instinct, honestly, like in those situations is not to be super aggressive. Like if you, if for anybody who's ever been in a sketchy situation like that, you know, like your first instinct is not to go attack the person that you might be afraid of, you know, and be like, come at them in an aggressive tone, you know, if anything, like you just want to kind of scope out the situation. Mm-hmm. So that's the situation I was in. Um, he was behind my seat for about two to three minutes and the gun went off behind my seat. Um, I did not know what was happening at that point. I remember my eardrums were ringing because all the windows were up. Um, and I screamed, but I couldn't hear myself screaming. I just remember the force of my scream. And like I arched my back forward and I just locked eyes with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And I could see it in my boyfriend's eyes that something was wrong. I, I just knew I didn't know what was going on, but I could tell that he knew what was going on. You know, he just felt like horror. It was just horror in his eyes. And he just looked at me and he just said no. And he opened his door. They all hopped out. At first, I thought we got hit by, like, um, a car in the back. I wasn't sure. Honestly, I had no idea. Like, it, my first thought inside of my head was not that I got shot. Um, so my boyfriend opens my car door and my foot falls out because I had my foot up on the rest on the door. And I realized at that point I couldn't pick up my foot. Um, my boyfriend was freaking out um, beyond measure. And the guy started screaming. He had the gun in his hand. That's when I realized inside of my head that I was shot. Um, he was screaming that not to call the cops. And I was like, okay. I looked over at them. It was probably like a minute where I had to like mentally mentally like kind of figure out what was I going to do next um and I was kind of observing the the situation and then I just turned to them and I just said if you guys don't call the cops right now I'm going to die here and it's going to be a bigger situation yeah and at that moment thankfully it just what I said struck the guy and he just said tell the cops you don't know who I am you just pick me up on the street and we're like okay like just go so he takes off running um I am super grateful for that situation, that part of my story, because I feel like he could have shot all of us. There's are those situations that I've heard about, you know, and um, I'm just so grateful to be alive and to have made it out of that situation because it was super scary and traumatizing. But because of all the trauma I went through in my life and because I'm an older sibling, I was surprisingly calm. I didn't cry the whole time. I was very directive in what I was saying. Um, I was like, okay, I need water. We need to, you know, we need to call the cops. You know, we need to hide the bong. <laughs> we need to, like, everybody focus, you know. And, like, I don't know how it was like that. People ask me, like, what the hell? Like, what were you thinking? And I'm like, honestly, I have no idea. I just went into, like, big sister mode and I was just okay. Honestly, it must be, it, it had to have been my boyfriend freaking out. Because he was freaking out at the level he was, I knew I couldn't freak out. Yeah. And and I was just trying to calm him down. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, he calls my mom. He tells me, like, do you want to call your mom? And at first I'm like, no, do not call my mom. And then I'm, like, thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I guess you have to call my mom. You know, like, this is a situation where we need a caller. Yeah. So he calls my mom, and he puts the phone to my ear. And at that point, the cops are pulling up. The cops took so long to get there, let me tell you guys. Um, like probably like 20, 30 minutes just for the cops to get there to have the conversation with me because it was a gun violent situation. Oh my gosh. Um, so they had to like secure the area and then they had to come see us before they even allowed the ambulance to come and get me out of the car. That's yeah. ridiculous. Um, they gotta make yeah, sure not only that, that, but I'm anemic. Oh what are you saying? No. They got to make sure that the whole, that the whole area is safe before the ambulance can come in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and not only, so they're right there, they're questioning me. Um, my mom gets on the phone, and I just tell her, like, Mom, I was shot. I love you. Um, 
she's freaking out, of course, and she's just like, who shot you? And I'm like, I don't know, because at this point, I don't know. He introduced himself as Green Eyes. I have no idea who this guy is, you know, like, and I'm just like, call my grandma, um, and we're going to go to the hospital right now. The ambulance just get, it had just pulled up when that happened. Um, this part's a little weird because I have, like, my memory mixed with the actual, like, footage, because when I had to go to trial, I had to watch the the camera from the cops so i had to like watch the actual footage of this which okay. is probably one of the whole the most hardest parts of my story like me saying bye to my mom and me knowing that i'm saying bye because i don't know if i'm gonna make it and just like the calmness and like remembering the admins showing up and everything um so the guy's aunt comes out and puts his her hand behind my my back and like kind of like holds it which I feel like really helped me as well um and the cops pulled me out and I could feel my body like the electricity I just knew something was wrong I knew something was off I heard her whisper to the cops um she can't move her legs and because I had said it a couple times like I can't move my legs Mm -hmm. and I just remember praying like over and over I was saying the serenity prayer because that's the only thing that I could like get myself to to remember at that point I was just like, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just was repeating it over and over again. And um, they took me to the ambulance. When I'm in the ambulance, um, there's a moment where I start fading out, and I'm, like, talking away because I'm trying to just keep myself talking. And I'm like, yeah, I like Grey's Anatomy. So it's okay if you guys have, they had like some student teacher there. So I was just like, yeah, it's okay. Like, I feel like I'm in a Grey's Anatomy expo- episode right now. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like chatting. I'm trying to keep myself just talking. And all of a sudden, my voice just starts fading out. Mm-hmm. And I just like start trying to say something's wrong. But I couldn't like even speak the word. So I just like get out like a little bit of a, like an utter of the word wrong. And they like flip their attention to me. And they had to like flip me upside down in the ambulance and like push something in my IV and stuff. And I like had woken back up. But that feeling of fading away in the ambulance is such a traumatizing, ugly ass feeling, you know, Um, that was really hard for me to get over for a while. Um, And the ambulance noises, like the white lights, all that stuff was super um, PTSD for me afterwards. so, yeah, that's where I'm at with my story. Am I going too long? Do you guys want to mm-hmm. ask any follow-up questions? Or am I, do I just keep going? <laughs> oh, no. um, I, do you know if him shooting you, did he do it on purpose? I don't know. So, we went to trial. I decided to fight in trial. The cops knew exactly who he was. He was a troublemaker in the town. He wasn't a good guy. Um, and they arrested him right away. They said that he had gunpowder on his hands. And um, I had to fly back and forth to Arizona to do the trial. So um, in the trial, he stuck with the story that it was not him. He said it was the co-worker who shot me and that we were just trying to blame it on him to get the co-worker off. That was his story that he stuck through the, through the both of the trials I had to go through too. So it's kind of, it's an ugly feeling because I'm like, honestly, like, and what I wrote to the judge is like, if this guy was, had a different heart, I would be writing a different letter to you right now i know i would be if he cared a little bit if he even uttered the word sorry to me instead he was um looking my boyfriend up and down he was like would not make eye contact with me during the trial he had to see me in my wheelchair and he did not care and to this day he's still making appeals to get out so he doesn't feel like what he did was wrong or he doesn't feel like he deserves to be punished for i think sometimes criminals just they do whatever they can to fight to get out you know regardless of what they did um which was super hard for me, you know, because I wanted him to, like, take responsibility. But I've had to learn that I can't let this guy steal any more from me. Yeah. Um, not only did he take so much of my happiness for those two years for so long, I went through so much because of his actions. Um, but I was had to move away from my grandma as well. So after that happened, I was in rehab for about a month. Yeah. And then right from rehab, I had to move back to California because I couldn't take care of her. She couldn't take care of me anymore. Um, she showed up to the first trial in an oxygen tank uh, in a wheelchair. She was really sick, and she was too sick to make it to the second trial. And she passed away one day before we got the guilty verdict. So it was like 
I felt like he took so much more away from me by taking those memories away from me too. And, um, I was very, very angry. Um, but I've had to learn that forgiveness is not for that person because he does not give one shit what I think or how I feel. Forgiveness is for myself. Mm -hmm. I got to keep moving. People make mistakes. You made your actions and you have to suffer the consequences for it. Mm -hmm. And I have to go my way and you go your way. I'm not worried about what you're doing or what life is going to throw your way. I have to believe in my heart that karma is going to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of, you know, and I'm just going to keep it, keep it pushing. Like mm -hmm. when I rolled exactly. out of those, those, that courtroom, you know, I realized what, I'm going to let this stop me. If he gets out right now, if he gets to walk free or if he gets a hundred years, what is the difference in my life? Yes. What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. You got to let it go and, and let make your heart happy. How you want to be happy. Mm -hmm. You're so beautiful. This mm -hmm. story is like, I get like, I'm like getting teared eye. I'm trying to not to be balling and stuff because I know you told no. this story so many. You are so beautiful. And like this story, just like it gives me goosebumps because, you know, I'm a big sister. You're a big sister. Like, I just, I can't imagine that, you know? And it's it like to see you even just sitting here and like tell that story like nothing, you know, just you know <laughs> going on like da 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 da. It's like, you know what? Oh my God. Like, the, it's this can literally happen to any of us because you know what we've been in a situation where we're sitting in the car and you know what yeah if you want to you know you want to bring your friend whatever you know we want to mm -hmm. know more people it's like people don't realize that situations like that happen every day but they th things like this don't happen every, you know they do happen but it's just uh, it could be you anybody out there you know mm -hmm. so it's it's just you know, yeah exactly you, you have a strong heart for real and you know I know it did take you a lot a long time to kind of get here to where you know you're like you know what whatever happens to him you know that's that you know you got to make yourself happy and and i i can definitely see a lot of a lot of i i feel like you've grown a lot too you know and it's just it's beautiful yeah definitely yeah. it's been cool too to not only grow like that as a disabled woman and my pride in that aspect but just as a person as a family member as a friend as a girlfriend mm -hmm. you know i'm able to be so much more humble in my life i'm able to experience and meet people that i would have never experienced without this injury yes. you know and i'm able to see the blessings and I feel like that's with anything in life like life is going to throw you struggles pick your struggle at this point mm -hmm. you know and it's like make the most out of it exactly. or let it destroy you like those are your options mm -hmm. you know and and let me just say people get really confused like I'm not positive and happy person 24 7 that doesn't exist that's not exactly. that's not possible right. I have my bad days I get angry I I have downfalls I have flaws you know but I don't let my frustration, my depression, my injury hold me back. I don't stay in that spot anymore. You know, yes. I, I, I look at a solution. Yes. I love it. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. people get confused with like the, the two and they're just like, how are you always like that? And I'm like, I'm not, but when I go out into the world, like that's my go time, you know, and I have my personal time and I have my, oh. um, the time where I, I'm happy, you know, and I'm okay. But because I tell people, because I've been depressed, because I've been that low, because mm -hmm. I've seen the trauma and the horror, I'm able to be this happy. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, it doesn't, you don't get one with this out the other, mm -hmm. you know? And like people do get confused with that. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. if you, you can't expect the rainbow without the rain. Yes. And then That's I feel like, weird. I feel like a lot of people at the same time expect things to change overnight when it's, mm -hmm. it's a process, you know, like you said, you went through it for like two years, right? Mm -hmm. Me too. I went through it for like two and a half, three years. And trust me, mm -hmm. I was I was at a low point in my life. I thought about suicide every single day. Like I didn't want to leave the house. I was just depressed. Like I didn't want to do mm -hmm. anything. I, I didn't want to see people happy because I knew deep down inside I wasn't happy. And like you said, you got to go through that in order to live like how you live now. And people ask me that all the time. How are you so happy? It, it's because I went through that. You know, I went mm -hmm. through probably what you're currently going through. And sometimes you got to take that time out to really just gather your thoughts, get your things together. And I feel like that, that, that that's something that we all need. Just don't try to be in that space for too long. Mm -hmm. You can literally get lost yeah. in that space. 
I still struggle to this day with making myself not get lost in that situation. Mm -hmm. I suffered with depression, anxiety. I had to realize I had mental health issues before my injury that, that it made it so much more bigger once my injury came into play, you know? And so I need to learn the tools and my triggers on how to control that. I don't get to just say, Oh, I have depression. I have anger problems or I have anxiety or whatever the case may be. And be like, that's my excuse. No, what do I, what can I do to be different? Who do you want to be in this world? You have to ask yourself those questions. Like, and if you want to be somebody different than who you are, you're the only one who can change that. So make some goals, you know, some small goals, like, yeah. and not only that, but write your small goals. And then I want you to write little steps down from your small goals to be like, how can I complete this goal? What do I need to do next? And cross it out. Take it day by day. Even if it's one day out of the week, start with one day. Then you'll go to two. Soon you're going to be doing it every single week. Like, you got to start somewhere. And, like, yeah. the, the last little part of this is just, in a year, you would have wished you started today. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Yes. So start today. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. And I could definitely relate. I'm pretty sure she can relate, too. So. And um, question. So how long have you been in a wheelchair? When did this happen? Uh, this happened six years ago. In March 2016, okay. I became paralyzed. Yeah, okay. so... And so was, I was 21 at the time, and it was one month be before my 22nd birthday. So I spent the, my birthday in the hospital, actually, in Arizona, like, away from everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. It fucking sucked. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so going through the trial and everything, what was he charged with? And then also, how many years did he end up receiving? So the first charge was actually who shot the gun and he actually beat that case my first case he beat so okay. they said that he was able to raise enough doubt in the jury's mind to say they don't know honestly who would have shot the gun because i didn't see with my own eyes nobody is saying that they saw who yeah. shot the gun mm -hmm. so that kind of really sucked um and was very hard for me i debated on doing a second trial because of how hard that one was for me Watching the footage back and being questioned and being judged and being like told that you're lying, not <laughs> that like you're gonna st stand there and tell me I'm lying about it, like it's so infuriating and it does take a lot in your mental health. So I would just say anybody to like really prepare yourself for that. I had to get a lot of support. I had to make sure I had my therapist on call. Like those things are very important. Take care of yourself as well. Um, but I realized if I don't fight this fight and he goes out and shoots somebody else and thinks it's okay, like if the most I can do right now is, is tell my story and fight, like it yeah. starts now, you know? So mm -hmm. the second trial he got um, charged for having the gun. Like they okay. said that there's no way like three of us with no charges before we've never had any incidents. And this guy's a nine time felon and like this happens, you know? So he got charged for that and he got 13 years because of, he was on probation and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, which some people, like, still argue, like, is that a lot, like, back and forth? But honestly, I do feel like it's a lot. I've grown up with family members that are chaotic, you know, and I know that people make mistakes, you know, and I wish, I asked the judge, like, can he take classes? Can he better himself? Can he go to church? <laughs> can he do something? You know, that's my justice. Like when they ask me, what's your justice? I'm like, honestly, the time don't really matter if you don't change. Like mm -hmm. yeah. my justice is him not hurting somebody else, you know? Um, yeah. But unfortunately I'll never get that. But they did say that one of his terms was that he's not allowed to reach out to me. So, um, yeah, we just left it at that. Do you feel like at any point that you would want to reach out to him? I thought about it, but I thought like, am I setting myself up for disappointment? Yeah. You know, am I going there like hoping for one thing? And like, even if I say, oh yeah, like regardless of what happens, like I'm going there just to see, you know, deep down in my heart, I want him to be apologetic. Deep, I'm lying to myself if I say I don't. I want him to be changed. I want him to care. I want him to tell me what happened and I want him to have a good excuse for it. And all those things could not happen. You know, it, one without the other, you know, who knows what could happen. I could find out more information that I don't want to know. Like yeah. at this point, I realize like I'm very strong at where I'm at. I'm still am battling with, you know, my depression and my anxiety. Those are the two main things that I do struggle with. And I'm not going to let him take any more of my happiness away, you know, and I feel like it will jeopardize it back. Yeah. 
I can see that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, now, going, going to the time that you are on your way to the hospital and you get to the hospital, what's going on at that moment? Like, are you up and aware or are you sedated? Like, do you know what's going on at that moment once you finally get so to the hospital? So I was awake for the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I was awake for the whole thing. Um, I remember in my head, I just wanted to get into surgery because I don't know why in my head I thought like I'm shot a bullet in me. I need to go to surgery, you know, like, and what they thought happened was that the bullet was bouncing around in my organs because that's usually what bullets do. They don't just stop. Um, and my stomach was on fire. My nerve pain started right when the bullet hit. So all of a sudden from my belly button down to the tip of my toes were literally burning, like burning beyond measure. I'm like, it's that shit still hurts today you know so like back then when I first felt it oh my god I thought like I was dying just from my legs being on fire so I was telling them like it's my stomach it's my stomach so they thought like oh you need to get into surgery because the bullet like ruptured something else yeah um so I'm just telling them just get me in so I'm laying there and they tell me I'm asking the guy like is it bad is it bad and he's like I'm just gonna treat it like it's the worst thing and and I feel like they kind of got a connection with me because of how much I was talking to them and they decided that they weren't going to take me to the local hospital that they were going to drive me 15 more minutes out to another hospital because and I told them why are you guys doing that Mm -hmm. and the lady straight told me it's because this hospital isn't a good hospital Oh and I look God. up her and I'm thinking, I know, and I tell her, they should not have not good hospitals. Like, right. what, what the fuck I That's crazy. Were you even talking like uh, that? Yeah, I was really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you saying to me, lady? I was like, I remember that moment so clearly. Yeah. And she just, like, chuckled a little bit. She's yeah. like, I don't know. We're just going to take you to this one. We feel like it's going to be best for you, which I think was like really cool that they went out of their way to do that, you know, because oh. who knows? Like so many people lose their life on the way to the hospital, you Definitely. know? So like, um, I'm very blessed the way it turned out. Um, so yeah. So anyways, they tell me the guy keeps on explaining what's going to happen like a million times to me mm-hmm. at this point. I'm like, guy like I'm alert I understand what you're saying like come on let's go to the next step he's like there's gonna be tons of people don't freak out all the stuff and I'm like okay um just get me inside I think I told him that like the last time you told me I'm like let's just go inside I understand already and so they bring me inside and I feel like that's when my pain really started cut to come in because they strapped me to the table mm. which I don't know why they did it but they strapped me to the table and they like cut off my clothes there's like so many nurses all around me because it was a teaching hospital which means that they have like interns in there like watching the doctors do stuff so Mm -hmm. it's like just a lot of people around Mm -hmm. and i've been that guinea pig before yeah yeah so they put me in that little um ct thing and my stomach was burning so bad they wanted me to have my hands up and i was like i can't hold it like i'm trying to hold my stomach like i cannot breathe like i couldn't lay down flat um, so they had to have somebody come and hold me down. Um, and that was really traumatizing too. Um, and then I get out of that thing and I look over at the little screen where like the doctor's sitting in the computer and there's literally like 20 people there. There's like f- firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors, and the guy's just talking and everybody's silent and everybody's just looking at the screen and the doctor's is yeah. talking. And I start having a panic attack. And I'm like, I need somebody to come talk to me right now. And they're like, oh, no, we're going to come explain. I was like, not about that. I just need you to have a conversation with me right now because I am freaking out. And I know it's not going to be good if I freak out. You know, um, I was just trying to keep my body as calm as possible. And for mm-hmm. some reason, that just sent me into a panic attack. Um, mm-hmm. Just the possibilities of what they were looking at, I think. Um, so they tell me, they bring me back to my room. At that point, they wouldn't let my boyfriend come in mm-hmm. because they didn't know if he had something to do with it. Mm. so they like made him wait in the waiting room and they wouldn't let me see him even though I was like asking for him Mm -hmm. um which was super difficult and the doctor just comes in and tells me um I want to let you know that you're paralyzed and I was like okay and he was like do you understand what that means and I said I can't walk anymore he said yeah and he's like let me know if you have any questions and I said okay (laughs) he just walked away Oh my gosh! <laughs> I know. I need to stop saying traumatizing things. Laughing. Yeah, yeah. I know. Sorry, guys. No, sorry, it's, but it's just because I say so much. <laughs> I, if you know, like I know, if that makes you feel comfortable, totally fine. You know, but yes, okay. 
I, I get it. So it was like, yeah, it was super difficult. But what people don't understand is my life was so traumatizing. I grew up very traumatic, yeah. always moving, went through 15, 20 elementary schools, mm -hmm. dad and mom in and out of jail, both drug addicts. Like I went through a hectic ass life. So, and I have always asked God, like, why me? Mm -hmm. Why the hell was I born in this family? Why the hell do you have me here? What the hell did I do in my past life to deserve this? Everybody's always talking about karma and all this stuff. And I'm just like, what did I do so bad to deserve this? I remember, like, that was the majority of my thought process yeah. um, growing up. And then to see this and to say my story out loud, I'm like, you know, all that time I feel like life did have a plan for me. Yeah. And, like, you go through things for a reason, you know. And I was able to turn my trauma into to power you know my pain into power and um yeah so did you so uh-huh i was gonna ask when did you finally get to see your boyfriend um probably like a couple hours later um they let my grandma come in my friend from california was actually like randomly visiting um and she wasn't too far and they let like her come in at this mm -hmm. point it's like very like um kind of in and out for me because they had given me tons of medicine yeah. but it was my nerves that were on fire so I was begging for medicine at that point and they were like we gave in you everything but it's just that it needs to get into your system like there's nothing we can do about it like for your nerves you can't just take something and it makes your nerves better like it needs to get into your blood system and I was just like please give me something I don't care what it is like take this away and like my grandma stayed that first night at the hospital with me um, they wouldn't let me have water and my grandma was like going to the sink and like getting the towel and filling it up with water and like putting it inside of my mouth because I was so thirsty oh my, God. <laughs> my poor little grandma breaking all the rules I miss her so much oh. and um, she like slept there with me that night and it was so hard for me because and her because I was waking up like every 10 to 15 minutes screaming mm -hmm. so um, that that whole night and that whole mor morning, like the next day, I just remember like going in and out of it, and I would wake up and like not when I would wake up, I would be in so much pain, yeah. and I, I like I couldn't talk. I could just see their faces, and like my boyfriend, my mom flew out from San Francisco, my grandma was there, and they just looked like horror, and like which made me kind of freak out a little bit more. Let me just say for anybody family members who are going through that. Um, it, it's very hard not to express your emotions, you know, but going in there very scared is not going to help the person on the hospital bed. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember like, that's a memory that's like in my brain, like the way that they were looking as I was like pa passing in and out and me just wondering, like, am I dying? Like what's happening right now to me? Like, I don't know what's going on. Like I didn't even have that memory really that I was paralyzed. I just remember like I was in so much pain and like something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, then that next day, I kind of, like, more came out of it. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Now, I seen on your Instagram that you had a picture. And on this picture, it was you laying in the hospital bed, but you had all these words up. Like, paralyzed, alone, depressed, you know, words like that. Mm -hmm. At that moment, what was you feeling? Um... I was feeling grateful to be alive. I was feeling grateful to be alive. Um, what I was, let me say this now that like, I'm thinking back, like yeah. what I was feeling inside and what I was saying to people were two different things. Mm. So like everybody was there telling me like, I'm taking it very well. I'm doing very good. All the doctors, all the nurses, the yeah. therapists that I was seeing, wow, you're taking it really well. You know, like you're, you're doing really good, you know? And that was like, mess with my head because I would be like I want to die like I don't understand like yeah. you know like yeah I'm grateful to be alive but like what is this life like I remember just getting ready one time in physical therapy there and I just started breaking down crying and she's like what's wrong and I was like I just want to leave and she's like leave where I was like out of this body I just don't want to be this person right now I want to be somewhere else like I could not believe this was happening to me um I was thrown in a situation where I now had to rely on unreliable people in my life. Um, yeah. I felt so scared for the future. I didn't know what was, my relationship was going to go. Yeah. Um, I couldn't do anything for myself anymore. Um, I was terrified. Okay. Okay. Now, 
what is your boyfriend going through at that moment too? Like, how was he taking all this information in? It was, he jumped into it really well um, at the beginning. He was like really eager to like learn and stuff. Um, he would come and stay on his days off at the hospital with me. And um, he like learned how to do bowel care and everything like that. And, um, but at the same time, it's like, he's 19 20 at this point so it's like you're still young you know like having to take care of a whole person is not easy like so i think it hit him more once we went to the hotel like after a couple months of having to shower me having to dress me i wasn't doing anything myself i was so depressed so like i wasn't even trying like i was living life as a quad like he would help transfer me and so i saw it slowly overwhelming him and not only that but i wasn't myself anymore yeah. i wasn't the same person I was angry. I was not happy. I didn't want to dress up. I didn't want to be alive, you know? And of course that affected his mental health a lot too. So I feel like we kind of just kind of got into this routine where we weren't like really in love, like together, together. We were just kind of coexisting. And I think that happens in a lot of relationships. Sometimes we forget to like take a second and be like, wait a second, we need time just to be in love like in the beginning like be so intrigued with one another what we're saying what we're doing you know and like we were, we didn't know how to do that we came from toxic ass family members you know we didn't know how to have a healthy relationship you know especially with an injury involved like that that's just difficult like to learn on this SCI stuff like it's not easy I had a catheter now like all these things are going wrong with me and um it was about like a year and a half or so where I kind of just told him, I feel like I need to go to my mom's house for a bit um, because I feel like you are not the type of person that is going to be like, this is too much for me. You're not going to leave. You're not going to say, I don't want to be with you anymore. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to go and visit my family members, take a break, and you see if this is what you want, you know? And... um, That was a hard decision for me to make, but I felt like it was necessary. So I went out to San Francisco, which was a big change for me, too, because I got to see other people taking care of me and how hard it was, you know, and kind of how I need to communicate better with my boyfriend. And we still talk, like, almost every single day. And we were just like, he was like, okay, I do not care about all that stuff. Like, come back. And at that point, I was kind of being a little bit more stubborn. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go back until I can learn how to do more things by myself. And yeah. I, everybody went to work. And I remember I was just taking on and off my pants and my compression socks and my shoes over and over and over again, which is probably not the healthiest way to do it, guys. But this is just what I did. Yeah. And I remember I was so dedicated. I was crying, tears down my face. But I was so like I need to do this I am tired of relying on people like I need to push myself more like I was just talking to myself talking to myself and like doing it I was able finally get it done you know I started transferring I started making food for myself I started just doing things for me and being like feeling like okay I can do this you know so then I finally we finally went back together and we've been together ever since you know but um, I feel like we did need that break for both of us to realize like this is what we want you know yeah mm-hmm. well that's beautiful too I guess yeah, yeah. That is, that is. okay so how long was your recovery time in the hospital 21 days 21 it kicked days. my ass out I did not have insurance they were like yeah go the bullet's still on my back. They they said that they couldn't remove it. Um, right now, I'm trying to get even scans to see if they can even take the shards out of my back because what happened was the bullet exploded. So it, like, fractured all my, like, T1s. Damn. Um, I mean, all my owls. Okay. And um, it causes me a lot of pain. I'm in constant pain. I'm in, I have yeah. so much nerve pain. I'm, like... It drowns me because it's, like, my body can't keep up with my mentality. I want to do a lot more than my body will allow me to do, which makes me extremely frustrated. Um, Especially when it's like, I'm, it's like, I don't want to bail on this because I want to, I'm bailing on this because I literally cannot do it. And that is so triggering to me, you know, it just reminds me how disabled I am and I have to fight against that. But what I realized is I need to learn like a healthy balance between uh, listening to my body and like keep on pushing forward, you know? Um, 
So yeah, I don't um, know where I was going with that. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, 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 you're fine. Um, I was gonna ask. Okay, so when you did take that break and you were on your own, learning all these things, you know how to do things by yourself. Mm-hmm. So what resources did you did you have any resources? Did you look stuff up, look stuff up, or did you you know like what? So it, yeah, it honestly went from the push girls. I think I might have typed in like wheelchair or something on like a bootleg movie site, and the, the push girls like their two random seasons from 2012 like popped up. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. on there, I I saw Chelsea, which was the youngest girl, mm-hmm. um, Chelsea Hill, and sh- I went to her Instagram, and there I was able to follow like more girls. So it just like slowly started trickling, mm-hmm. and I realized like all this stuff is right down the street from me. Like they're posting about the abilities expo, which is like 20 minutes away and the role mm-hmm. experience. Like, so I was able to go to the abilities expo with my dad. And, um, there we met the role and I got like a, a wheelchair thing from Jay from Chelsea's boyfriend. And so he came to my house and it was my second life day at that point, um, the day after my second life day. And I was a mess. Mm-hmm. and he was like she needs to go to the role as experience like you need a sisterhood you need yeah. friends mm-hmm. like you need like life gets better than this and, and what is he that pushed the role the role experience uh-huh yeah so it's a um group i mean it's an event where over 200 girls from all around the world get together and they all just hang out for the weekend and they have like jam-packed events they have panels they have pj party they have a pool party they have like awards that they give out last year i won the boundless babe award which um mm-hmm. is given to one girl out of the whole event and i got to get recognized for that and so that still gives me chills because it was just such a beautiful feeling to get recognized for something that i love doing you know and that i did I was doing like so freely not to get recognized, you know, I was just doing it just because I love doing it. And then like to see like what an impact it's made and to see like bigger people in the community recognizing how hard I'm working Mm -hmm. to help out the community, you know, and to bring people in and to like, um, so many girls this year, I've been able to talk into going and just be like, you need a friendship. I met some of my best friends there and like, other girls who have been shot too like I didn't even think that was a thing I didn't think other girls have been shot I didn't think that happened you know and so um it was really empowering I that's honestly the moment where I told the story a million times so any for you know past viewers that are listening Mm -hmm. sorry (laughs) but I feel like this moment is so empowering to my story because it's the moment where I connected back with God Mm -hmm. basically I was very angry at that point with God and um that day it's from Thursday to Sunday. So on Saturday night, I got to like see the push girls come. I met the Triumph foundation, which was telling me that they're going to give me a new wheelchair. I got to see all these girls dressed up. I was just on fire. Right. So I'm laying down in my bed that night. My mom Marie fell asleep and I'm praying to God. And I'm like, thank you God for putting me in this situation. Thank you for letting me meet these people. This, this night was so amazing. And I stop in the middle of my prayer and I just start breaking down crying because I just, realize I'm thanking God for this situation for this moment for these people and I was like I almost felt like apologetic towards God because I was like I'm sorry for not trusting you like I'm sorry for not seeing your vision I'm sorry for doubting you I'm being so angry at you like this whole time you know like when you had a bigger purpose for me out there and um yeah it was very it was a very empowering moment in my life um and what connected me and just realized like I'm alive I need to fight. Okay. Really cool. And it's, it's cool, you know, for you to say that here on our channel too, because anybody out there who's also in a wheelchair is a woman, you know, there's lots of events out there. I didn't know, you know, I'm pretty sure Kevin, you didn't mm-hmm. know either. So it, mm. it's good for, it's good that you share that with us. Yeah. That's what the twins are coming down for. They're going to come down for the world's experience. It's next week. It's once a year. Yeah. And this is going to be the biggest event. It's actually the 10 year anniversary. So there's going to be 250 girls there from all over the world, from Ireland, UK, Mexico, everywhere. And yeah, it's just a fun filled weekend to just like get get some friends. You know, you feel so empowered when you you go in there and everybody's at eye level with you Mm -hmm. and you're like, like, I feel like I belong, mm-hmm. you know, and like, instead of going into a, a grocery store and you're the only one in a wheelchair, you know, and it's just like, it's a different feeling. So yeah, that's really the event that got me out of my shell. And um, every year I go back because I meet newly injured girls that were just like me and I get to go up to the house and like, hey, 
it's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Like we're going to be friends. We get to hang out. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to teach you all these things and, um, watching them grow is so amazing. I love seeing them back every single year. And yeah, so it's, um, it's a lot of fun. So, so is this event only for females or is it like a, a event that anybody <laughs> can go to? Cause it seemed like, you know, no boys allowed. No, yeah, just exactly. <laughs> it seemed like y'all got a little secret society over there that, you know, <laughs> no boys allowed for sure. You know, <laughs> That's so, um, a little secret, <laughs> a little secret is that are working to make it um, co-ed for both boys and girls. But right now, it's not for boys and girls. Usually, the boys come like on um, Saturday night. They invite the public, so the public yeah. is to come out and like um, do the award nights and stuff like that. But yeah, they are trying to currently to make it co-ed, but not yet. Are you involved in the Triumph Foundation? To me? Yeah. No. Uh, uh- you know what? What is the Triumph Foundation for, uh, for those of us who don't know? Because I don't know what it is. Yeah. So the Triumph Foundation is a ma- is an amazing nonprofit organization in Southern California. They basically help people with disabilities um, live their best lives. Okay. Um, they give out grants. Mm-hmm. They give out free w- wheelchairs. Where basically they're loaning you a wheelchair for however long you need to have it, and they make sure you're fitted for it. That it's that has to write breaks on it. They do the wheelchair repairs on it. You can get, um, I've gotten numerous stuff from them, like my shower bench. I've gotten a car from them. They donated me a car. Um, I've gotten so many things. So it's like they help with physical therapy. You know, if you need anything basically to help you keep on living your life, um, they give out grants for that. Um, they give out a 2000 up to $2,000 towards different things. Um, that you need. So if you guys are interested in that, send me a, a DM or send me an email. It's the same as my Instagram, brianna.rolls.on at gmail.com. I'll send you the form. It's so easy to get. Um, and that resources is just there. Not only that, but they put on tons of free events. They put on whole wheelchair sports festivals that have boxing, baseball, hand cycling, so many things, beat ball. There's so many different stuff to do there, um, and it's all for free. So they do that all year round. They do hand cycling events that are free. Um, yeah, so it's a great organization. Okay. I like the organization. It's a beautiful thing. But I would but I would like to go ahead and see as far as, like, you know, like, the events and stuff like that. But I'll leave the foundation and, like, applying for stuff for everybody else because I deal with the VA, so I get everything. Mm-hmm. I get everything for I get like all my care and stuff from the VA. So, you know, like I get my wheelchairs oh, that's so- every two yeah. years from the VA, like shower shit, anything that they are working on, anything new, they they send it out to me. They ask me if I want it and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and leave that for somebody else who needs it because I know a lot of people out there need that and more than I do because I get it yeah, from somewhere else. They're more about, they're all about community too. So yeah. they put on tons of support groups all over Southern California and online okay. as well. So you can just join online to their support groups. Okay. There's one like literally every single day of the week mm-hmm. where you can join on, talk to newly injured people. I go and talk to like newly injured people that are in the hospital, yeah. help them, teach them what they need, you know? And so it's really cool. It's a really good way to give back to the community. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. And it reminds me when I, I'll never forget those words how, when people tell me, I'll never forget when you rolled into my room when I was just right there at my lowest point, yeah. you know, and just try to bring a little bit of lightness to them. Just try to tell them like with a positive energy because you have that persona, you know, so to go school in there to a newly injured guy that's life is upside down and just tell him like, hey, it's going to be all right. Like check out my profile, check out these other numerous profiles that they didn't even imagine that they yeah. couldn't even find it without your help, you know, and like, mm-hmm. so it, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that it it humbles me a lot. It reminds me of where I've came from and it helps me give back. And I just love to do, I love to make friends that way. Um, so yeah, I can send you some resources too. I'm surprised yes. that you don't know about it and you're in California. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I would, de- well, I guess cause I'm in Bakersfield. So it's like, I don't know. I feel, uh, like, I feel like Bakersfield is a different world than LA, you know? So, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Yeah, but, We're but, out the cut. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I would definitely like some information cause I would definitely like to go talk to people. That's like on my bucket uh-huh. list. I would definitely love to go talk to somebody who's newly injured so I can give them, you know, just some game, some motivation just so they can kind of see yeah. what, what life could be after a spinal cord injury. So yes, I'm Yeah. Th- that's something I'll I send you some for. of the links so you can like check them out the support groups. I think it would be super dope and we're okay. always looking for new people. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds up. 
Sounds dope. And you're located in LA, right? So Yeah, I'm more in Los Angeles area. Oh, uh, what are some fun things to do out there, I guess, if anybody's watching, visiting LA, what are some things that you feel like, you know, maybe you would recommend for somebody who is visiting in a wheelchair? Uh, Hmm, I have no idea in a wheelchair because like a part of me wants to be like, yeah, go to Hollywood Boulevard, go to the beaches. But right now it's right. bad out here. So. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, I mean, I'm not trying to go get you robbed out here, you know, it's a little crazy, crazy. Um, I don't really know. Like I'm a super chill person. So a lot of what I do out here is like with the community. So I'm always like super dialed into like events or like you know, hanging out with friends or like just like reaching out to different people online and just be like, Hey, like, let's go hang out together so that you have somebody local with you. And, um, I'm a stoner. So if you're trying to smoke, then I'll chill out and smoke with you. If not, there's tons of other people in our community that love to hang out and love to kick it, you know? And I feel like when you're all together, no matter where you're at, if you're just at a random park, mm -hmm. it's empowering. It's yeah. going to be a fun time. Like we're a fun group of fucking people and like we have a blast and we're really funny and we have a great sense of humor, you know, and we're just like have our humbled warriors, you know? Um, and I think it's really something that everybody needs to experience. Yes. I'm here for it. <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. I need to do more for the community. I, I feel like I do a lot, but I feel like that I could go out my way and do a lot more. And just talking to you and just hearing what you do, it it's motivated me to want to go out there and just do more for the community. And I feel like I need to create something for the guys too, because y'all got this Rolex Rolex experience. <laughs> I, we definitely need something for the guys, because you know guys are more you know standoffish, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot harder for us to want to reach out to other guys or mm -hmm. you know just just communicating period because still i find sometimes where i just don't want to talk you know we all go through it yeah you know but i yeah. feel like i feel like i could do a lot more i feel like i could do a lot more and yeah, yeah. i feel like it happens in the area i feel like yeah. you need to start it like i have started in a women's group in the in like not by LA but like a little bit more further because I realized there was like a lot of girls in that area that yeah. were just scattered out and so I created a group just for them to come like hey anybody in the area I just messaged a bunch of people like are you close by like let's meet it up every second Monday of the month and like just let's go talk you know and have a support group together um but yeah I think like online too we've been doing a lot of groups online because of like whole COVID thing which is super cool because you get to connect to other people yeah. um right. Honestly, I'm going to connect you to a bunch of guys because, honestly, I feel like the guy community is so much more stronger than the girl community out here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, like, has pushed me so much to, like, do the women's disability show, like, just even on the platform because the guys had originally started it on our channel. It was Sean, Tom, and Bobby who are all, like, um, over 19 years injured and they all have experience and they kind of created this podcast online to talk about, like, guy things. Yeah. And they had me on as a guest and I was like, Hey guys, we need a women's show. Like, what's yes. up? So they made me the host and like I'm just able to talk about um different perspectives of life, you know, like so I feel like it's really important for girls because they're like, How do I dress? What do I do? What about dating? You know, like how do I be a woman? How do I be a mom again? Like yeah. There's so many questions, you know, and guys have a lot of questions too, but um, all the guys over here hang out together. So maybe we need to just connect you with a different group of guys. Yeah. We, sure. Well, well, I guess it's because I don't really know anybody in a wheelchair that I actually hang out with. Like, uh -huh. like everybody I talk to who's in a wheelchair is online. So they're all in different states. Mm. Anybody who writes me, like they're all just in different states. So there's nobody that I actually hang out with that is in a wheelchair. And then certain groups that I am associated with, like the Paralyzed Veterans of America, which is a huge group, and they have chapters in every single state. And they do so many things for our community like it's so beautiful because you know like they give me free dodgers tickets they do free fishing events they do everything but mm. they're in long beach so they do a lot of things at like nine o'clock in the morning ten o'clock in the morning and long beach is like three hours from us so it's it's hard mm -hmm. for us to want to get up and go out there drive three hours just to go you know be there early so yeah so i miss a lot of the events that they actually throw because I'm so far outside of LA, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I agree. I mean, there's ton, there's honestly so much to do over here, like with the yeah. Willow community. Like that's what I tell people. Like I'm super blessed to be in this area. Yeah. Um, it is so important, but I feel like that human interaction is so important. Like we all just it linked is. up for the Chicago Abilities Expo. We got a booth out there for the Abilities Expo, and yeah. we just um the twin, all the girls, uh, the twins, and Maya live out there too. Um, yeah. so we were able to just hang out, and we had like. A big group of people and we were able to bring in some other people that we met at the Billy's Expo so it's just like a big group of wheelchairs all smoking weed in the parking lot it was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> well, I, re- I remember that because I remember when they was posting about it I think like a like a month and mm-hmm. a half ago was it like a month and a half ago two months ago something like that yeah it wasn't that long ago yeah, yeah it was, all, it was yeah. like a couple of weeks ago yeah, yeah. We, we were just doing it so like mm-hmm. it was it was a lot of fun and like it was one of the most like it's so many laughs you just feel so regular like it's so dope to just hang out you know have a couple drinks have a couple laughs like mm-hmm. we decided to go crash a party together um because we were sitting in the parking lot and for a couple hours and it was like um a mexican party going on like a quinceanera or Ooh, something okay. i don't know if i'm saying that right and so they were like playing music and we were just like oh we want to be a part of the party you know but we we're like how are we going to roll in there all deep with a bunch of like 10 wheelchair users you know like what the hell so it took us a while, but we eventually decided that we were going to go in and crash the party because we all wanted to cross it, cross it out of all our bucket list. Yeah. And we had like a video and we're, you just see like a line of us like all oh, going inside and we like so all funny. go on the dance party and we're just like all like <laughs> dancing on the dance floor. Yeah. And like once we came out of there, we were just so like on fire. Like it was the most funniest, just free thing that we could have done that like it wouldn't have been the same with able-bodied people. It just wouldn't have been, you know, like it was right. fun because it was a bunch of wheelchair people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Now 2020, right. A global, mm-hmm. a global pandemic hits and you know, mm-hmm. everybody's pretty much confined to the house. How was that for you living in LA and also being in a wheelchair during the pandemic? Because I feel like that we, that a lot of people outside of LA, like we hear about what LA was going through, but from your standpoint, how was that living during a pandemic and being in a wheelchair in LA? Being in quarantine. Yes. It was so hard, especially when I first hit because I'm like, I touch my wheels all day long. Like my, my hands stay dirty. You know, yeah. it's like, what do I do? I have to take off my wheels. I have to leave them outside. I have to sanitize them. Like, how bad is this thing? You know, yeah. and like, not only that, but it was panic. It was anxiety. And mm. it was me being so scared that I was going to get it and die um, because yes. we did. it was so unknown. We didn't know what was going on. Mm. Um, that I lived, I felt like I was living like in constant fear, constant anxiety. And I really thought my depression going down because I realized the reason that got me out of my depression, out of my two year little depression is that the community. I yeah. started going to all these events. I started going and seeing people. I was out in the store. I was able to get out and about. And now yeah. here I am locked in my room again. Mm-hmm. I get online maybe for an hour. I get off yeah. my food. I order it from freaking Instacart. I'm not even going to the store anymore. Like yeah. it was extremely hard. Like I was, my hands were getting dry from how much hand sanitizer I was lo- using. Like I was double masking. I was taking this shit yeah. serious. Like I was like, no, like I'm not trying to get it. Like, um, yeah. Um, which is not a fun way to live, you know, um, I had to realize like I needed to be open with my community. So I opened up on Instagram and I'm like, guys, I'm going through it. Like, I do not know what to do. I do not feel like leading anything. I do not feel like being positive. I yeah. feel myself going down and I don't really know what to do. And like, I talked to a couple of my other will friends and they were like, we need to find hobbies. We need to find hobbies that we can go do in the house and that we can share with each other online. So I started making these little mini um houses they're like diy houses and you basically have to like put all the little pieces together and they're like have lights and everything and i just it was something to make my mind like creative something to just keep my mind to feel like i'm doing something so Mm -hmm. i would just do it as i'm watching tv and stuff and then i became just so obsessed with decorating and that's what got me into like designing and making designs and stuff like that and i just kind of focus my energy on that and not only that but I realized I needed to revamp my life I needed to focus on my growth myself not only like who I am in the community but who I who is Brianna what is Brianna doing what is what are Brianna's goals not what are Brianna's goals for other people what are Brianna's goals for herself Mm-hmm. You know, that was very difficult because never did I ask myself these questions you know yeah. and I had to 
I have to, I had to find my inner child again, which is like, you know, your younger self. And I had to talk to my younger self and be like, what did you go through? What did you learn? What do you want to unlearn? Mm-hmm. Who do you want to be? You know? And like, I, I, I encourage people to write down who they want in a best friend, who they want in a partner and become that person. You know, think about that, that version of yourself that you want to become, you know, somebody patient, maybe, you know, whatever the case may be, you'll see in that, in that letter, like where your flaws lie as well. And I feel like everybody needs to do that. And that's not easy work. Trust me, it takes a lot of tears and a lot of frustration. And it's like, I just want to be okay. Like, why is my mind fighting against me? You know, but there's another side to that. There's an empowering side to that, you know, and I, and I got asked not too long ago like what is the why do you do that like what is the positive outcome of you being that way and I was like wanting to be alive like being happy being able to smile being able to look forward to the future because for so long I was just surviving through life even before my entry Mm -hmm. just surviving just trying to get through the next day trying to make it you know and that's no way to live that's a struggle it hurts it's hard you look back and you regret a lot you know and I needed to take care of myself my mentality I needed to become best friends with myself look in the mirror and say hey you're beautiful why was it so easy for me to tell all these girls that they were so beautiful but I could not even look at myself in the mirror and tell myself it you know so during the pandemic I really dug deep I started reading self-help books you know (laughs) I started journaling I was like girl you need to focus on yourself you know um so like the first probably like six months were like really hard I went into like a little bit of a panic but then I I used it as a reason to grow like what can I get out of this and Mm -hmm. um I I also owe that to my community you know these girls inspire me they push me to do my be my best self you know um yeah so that's how it was for me yes how what did you guys go through in the pandemic um pretty much the same thing now i ain't gonna lie we bickered during the pandemic but at the same time you mm-hmm. know we were trying to be as safe as possible so you know we we stayed away from family we used hand yeah. sanitizer all the time you know we was always masked up and you know we didn't catch covid until like two months ago so the mm-hmm. whole, so pretty much the whole pandemic that was going on, like we didn't catch it until like two months ago, and then once we finally caught it, uh, I felt like dirty in a way. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know. I know it's almost like you don't want to admit it, huh? Yeah, I yeah. caught it like almost like two or three months ago too, and I had it. I got bronchitis. I was so sick, what? and like I'm a stoner, so it does not help. I could like yes. barely inhale. I was like a suffering. I was like. Yeah. Um, it was just making it so much worse. I felt like I was dying, but I didn't think I was going to push through it, but it's still so scary. Yeah. yeah it's, it's yeah. be careful. Those cases still in LA are going up like crazy, you know? So it's yeah, like, no. you're feeling kind of like it's over cause you're seeing everybody live their life, but I just like, still be cautious, still you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, life can be hard, but yeah. lean on each other. Mm-hmm. Exactly. For sure. Exactly. Communicate. Um, okay, so mm-hmm. is there anything else you want to say on the podcast before mm-hmm. we end it? Anything that we missed? Or also, if you just want to let our viewers know where they can reach you out, where they can see you, where they can find you, any events coming up that you want to let them know? Yes. So um, let's see where to start. So you can follow me at Brianna.Rolls.on. I am very female friendly. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love to help newly injured girls out. And I love to give them advice, you know, to reach out to me um, and know that you have a friend in me. Sometimes it's hard to send that initial message and be like, hey, I need help. I get it. Trust me, I do. But only only positivity can come from that. You can only go up, you know, and like, the worst thing that somebody can do is not respond, which yeah, sucks, but you know, it's, you're not getting any further down. So Mm -hmm. I made some of my closest relationship just by talking through the internet. Um, this injury makes us family. We know each other more than anybody else. We've gone through stuff where we can understand each other so simply, you know, and that makes us bonded. Uh, Mm -hmm. so I'm your sister. I'm your, I'm your best friend. I'm I'm that person you can lean on. So reach out to me um, if you have any questions. Check out the podcast. Um, If you're interested in being on a guest on the podcast, we have guests every single week, every single month. Uh, We're always looking for different perspectives in the disabled community just so that we can reach different people um, in the community. Um, 
and me see what else is going on. The Rolls experience is going to be next week. You have to get your tickets already. Those are almost going to be, um, they're stopping the tickets, I think, very soon this week. Judy Human is going to be there from Crip Camp. So oh. she is a pioneer in yes. our community. And she's going to be doing a meet and greet. So Ooh. we're going to be able to have our book signed and be able to hang out with her. So that is going to be so much fun. There's going to be tons of um, advocate people that we look up to there's going to be a parenting class there's going to be tons of things going on so mm -hmm. make sure you check that out um and yeah i just want to say that you are a fucking amazing anybody listening anybody watching you guys uh make sure that you empower yourself and maybe tell yourself that your dreams matter that you're worthy of everything that you want in this life that you are dope as fuck that you are beautiful or you're handsome that you matter in this world you know and always give yourself those positive affirmations and that positive reassurance yeah. because they matter you don't realize when you're feeding yourself negative energy how much you drown yourself and little things like oh i suck why'd i do that what's wrong with me those are all things that are, are bad to tell ourselves we need to uplift ourselves just like we're going to uplift somebody else so let me yes, just give you that positive encouragement <laughs> yes amen i love it yes. thank you so much brianna for coming on our podcast i really appreciate it i love your energy like i'm so here for it like i just love it thank you so much yeah. um babe you want to say anything <laughs> just, <laughs> no i'm just <laughs> I'm just I'm just happy that I was able to reach out to you and get you on the podcast because a lot of the things that you said is it's things that people need to hear, you know, it's, it's stuff that I need to hear, you know, and I'm telling you, I'm going to get off of this podcast right now and, and go write a whole bunch of people back, you know, <laughs> so, I, so I really just want to say thank you for coming on and thank you for empowering women everywhere, all right, not just women that are in wheelchairs, but just women, you know, period. So, yes women so period yes. yes keep doing yeah. you i love it problem. definitely yes so make sure thank you guys, you guys. right back at you guys yeah. yeah i hope i can have you guys on the podcast too you definitely. guys are doing amazing things i think I, your energy is just so amazing so it's super cool that you guys have the heart to do this you know and reach out and just get different perspectives of podcasts we need more views um mm. so yeah i love it Yes, look, look, whenever y'all want us to come on the podcast, if you want me, if you want her, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just go ahead and let us know. <laughs> I'm available all the time, pretty much. So, yeah, just let us yeah. know. Make sure you guys go check them out. Brianna.rose.on. Go check her out on Instagram. Make sure you guys go follow her. Appreciate everything that you do for the community, and thank yes. you for coming on. Thank, thank you. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Peace. Peace. Hey, guys. Okay. All right. Got to let it go.